Full time here at Walsh Park where it has finished. Waterford 128, Tipperary 21 points. Paddy Stapleton, you were watching the game for off the ball today. Not a good day at the office for Tipperary. No, not a good day, Dahi. Um, as I said, you know, we said in the report earlier on, they went very well early. Uh, they were nine points to three up, heading to the 20th minute. And Waterford couldn't get going at all. But Stephen Bennett scored, you know, a fantastic goal. Great run through the middle by Mikey Kiley. And, and he broke through our half-back line like has happened a few times today. Uh, and a great finish. But it ignited Waterford. It ignited our crowd. And it seemed to totally shock Tipperary. And, and you know, for the remainder of the match, the game was played in Waterford's terms. And really, they were dominant. And we we're talking about they're missing five players um, that would certainly be starting going into championship. And that's just that's just very, very hard for Tipperary to take him to come down here again in six weeks' time. You mentioned there Waterford were dominant. Was the goal the changing factor or was there maybe a change in the style of play? Or was it in fact maybe just Tipperary easing off the pace? For you that changed the game? For me, the goal did most of it. Although there was a couple of signs, we looked at it as it was going on and they had broken through or half broken through a couple of times and Tipperary got back at him. But when Mikey Kiley broke through that time, they just needed that good chance and, and finished it. And after that, it seemed like the energy was sapped out of tip players. We weren't winning any break. Tipperary weren't winning any breaks. And Waterford kept on streaming down on top of every puck out. And, you know, I'd say that the full back line wasn't exploited, really, in essence, like you might think about Tipperary the last few years. It was just the runners of Waterford that kept coming and coming and coming. And they looked very fresh throughout the match, whereas Tipperary around the middle of the field looked a little bit leggy, looked like uh, they were struggling with the pace of things. And maybe that's natural with how Waterford have been under one management for the last few years. But, you know, it's a bit of a worry for Tip. Are you worried for Tipperary in terms of what you've seen so far in this league and in terms of, you know, we're not that far away, April 17th, the opening round of the championship. Are you worried that Tipperary can change things around to, well, 10 point defeat there today? Can they turn that deficit around in five or six weeks time? I certainly think they can look at things, uh, change things around, change positions. There's a couple of players that can come back in and I think we can make the middle of the field a little bit stronger with maybe the addition of Norm McGrath, uh, Dan McCormack, players like this. Um, but, but it is it it is a psychological thing maybe now you're coming back down groundhog day the the crowd will be bigger the noise will be bigger and and they'll be baying for blood I suppose after today that was a really big win the Waterford crowd we could hear them there they really enjoyed it and um, so I'm sure they'll be hoping for the same when they come down the next day so Tip I suppose have a lot of work to do they've a lot of soul searching to do to try and steal themselves and say right okay what do we need to do do to improve for the next day. The Tipperary squad that we know, you know, you had the under 20, under 21s winning and, you know, maybe last year people were asking from Tipperary to bring those players through. The likes of Brian, Brian McGrath, Paddy Cadell, Mark Hewell, for these players to get more game time. We've seen them get bits of game time so far in this league, but in terms of the overall squad depth, where do you think Tipperary are at the moment? I think a lot of these players are still finding their way, as you said, Dahi. They haven't probably played a huge amount compared to what Waterford's underage players would have played the last couple of years. Even if you look at Cork, they would have bet Cork in the under-20 and under-21 All-Irelands that time. And a lot of those Cork players are probably nearly established, uh, full established senior inter-county players. So um, it is rough when you start off first inter-county level. It, it very rarely comes in smooth. So I think they still need experience. And that's why I was hoping that they might get another league game this year. Because every league game actually brings you on. It brings you on heaps uh, uh, and uh, that's what they would have needed but they're probably going to have to trust one or two uh, I think Brian McGrath is good enough to play he showed it the last couple of years I think uh, Mark Hewell, nearly at this stage has to be put in there he scored four points today we saw every time he got a good ball he was winning it at least and he was trying to take his man on so he looks like he has something to offer Connor Bowe is probably maybe more of a wild card we've only seen him play a little bit the last day against Dublin and we saw him play most of the match today but he looked very good in sports but I think he'll still have to look for experienced players Still have to look at players that have been there and done it uh, unless a guy comes out and, and hurls very, very well in the league. And There's probably nobody has truly sort of come into their own as a young player yet. And, you know, as a tip supporters, that's what they'd be looking for. And, and it probably hasn't just happened just yet. For the, those younger players, Paddy, like last year you had Brendan there, Paddy there, Shamey there. We now know Shamey is going to be out for a few weeks, which is a, a huge blow for Tipperary. But for some of these younger players, when you came on the scene first with Tipperary, you had Owen Kelly there, Lara Corbett, Brendan Cummins, huge players, huge personalities. When you're a young player coming through, 
what exactly do you need to do to get those lads, get the attention of those players to say, look, I'm good enough to start here. And like looking now at those young Tipperary players, what do they need to do to say to Noel, to say to Shamey, look, I should be starting here? I think the big thing is your play has to be very, it actually has to be like your club for you have to go out there like you're playing with your club. And, and that means going out with confidence, really. You have to go out and say, well, I'm, whatever happens, if we're winning or losing, I'm going to dominate my man or I'm at least going to put in a good showing. And even if the team is going bad there today, you know, if I was trying to make this team, I'd still be saying, right, well, it's not going to be on my back. It's not going to be on my shoulder. So, but you have to have a thick skin. Like I know, you know, even in trainings, uh, starting off, even in challenge matches, league matches, you're going to have a couple of things go against you. And that's when you have to have the resilience in the fight. And I think they will have it. I, you know, even the start of the second half, you could see they came out a bit more up for it. But as it went on again, I think Waterford's style, actually, uh, the fact that they're so honed in on what they're doing the last few years, that, you know, totally overrode anything Tip could do. But uh, look, the young players just have to keep the head down. You know, there'll be a lot of noise. be a lot of people like me even, maybe, say, you know, criticising today. But they have to just take it on the chin and go back training next week, listen to their trainers and stay going. And look, this is a bad loss today, but I remember an awful loss we, 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 that happened to us in 2009 against, against uh, Kilkenny in the league. And we came back and we, we nearly pipped them in the league final about six weeks later again. So they've seen a level today. Uh, they'll be hurt after this, but maybe that's no harm either. What we saw from Waterford today, look, maybe looking at the opening 20 minutes there from Waterford, you know, we were thinking maybe Tipperary could come away with a win here, but things turned around. Obviously, that Stephen Bennett goal was crucial. But this Waterford team, Liam Catley, it's his third year there now. They are a very a, a team that's well manufactured. They know what they're doing. But how impressed were you there with their play today? And a lot of other players, the likes of Devi Hutchinson, to come back into that squad. So this team definitely can improve another maybe two, three levels come April come May but from what we saw today with the fringe players there how impressed were you? I'm very very impressed I mean I, I did think Tip were all over them in the first uh, 15 minutes 20 minutes but when Waterford got the goal they just it was like they clicked it was like a click in and, and everything became automatic they just started knocking down puck outs running onto the brakes dispossessing the Tip guys but they had some great individual performances as well. Like Stephen Bennett, obviously, he's one of the guys that they, they look for on a big day. But 116 from, uh, one what was it, 1-4 from play. Like, that was fantastic. But he played very, very well also. Jack Prendergast in the, score, in the corner, three points from play. So they had, and uh, Patrick Curran was centre forward, scored three points as well. So they had a lot of scores all over the field. But if you look at it, 12 points from freeze. That, like, a lot of people say, Asher, they got 12 points. But really, the reason they got it is they dominated the uh, play. They dominated possession, so you have to have the ball, and they were running it down the tip guys' throats. And tip tip defenders were struggling around the middle of the field and and uh, in around the twenty one. We were struggling with them. Uh, Tipperary were struggling with them, and they were getting dragged down. And that's how you get twelve points. They're not just magically given to you on a plate. So of course there was lots of scores from play, but there was a lot of good play, uh, hard running from the Waterford forwards that ended up in scores. The Waterford full forward line. Come the championship, that's going to be very interesting to see who Cattle goes with. You might be looking maybe Desi Hutchinson, Kylie and Stephen Bennett there. And there's a load of options in terms of what types of balls you can give in there. Kylie, we know, give him a long high ball. He can he can win that ball. And then Desi, like any cornerback, is going to be, you know, uh, they're not going to like that at all. But how dangerous is that Waterford full forward line now? Unbelievably dangerous. Because you're even talking about belly gunner players, and especially Desi coming back after a big All-Ireland win with Bally Gunner, like they'll be mad to push that on because as much as brilliant to win for Bally Gunner, imagine what an All-Ireland to do for the people of Waterford and, and you know what legendary status they go down as. But Desi, even if, if Desi Hutchinson was playing today, I think he would have really done a lot of damage because we saw balls going in in the first half. Mikey Kiley is more of a target man, but he was getting the balls down the side. But I think if Desi Hutchinson was, was there, he might have had a, uh, three or four points easily in the first half. So it's it's a mix. Though. If you if you, if you you have all small guys, fast guys, then you can get on top of that. If you have all big men that the ball is coming in high, you can get on top of that. But if you have the mix where you have a target man, but you have also a guy sweeping over and back and probably Stephen Bennett shoving out the field to leave space and coming onto the breaks, then that's a fairly potent attack. And I think they're building well. I, I, I'm, t- I'm talking about them there for the last while. I don't think they need to be at full gear. Now they look good today, but if they can get full gear during the Munster Championship, I think they'd be very hard to stop. My next question was going to be, when they do get the full gear, like again, I know it's only the league, you know, there's going to be a lot more work to be done with every team. 
but we're still judging Limerick as the top side mm. in the country. So when Waterford do get the full pace or full pelt, like how far off are they off Limerick then, in your own opinion? <sighs> judging Limerick, like if it's Limerick of the All Ireland final last year, they're probably still a little bit. I think everyone's a little bit under them, but the last few weeks, you know, you I would have thought by now Limerick would have had it picked up, and again another draw in Ennis today. Um, so I'm actually not certain. I think they should, I think Cork have grown, and I also think Waterford have grown. It was a tough year for Waterford last year. They started groggy, we'll say, a bit of a hangover after the All Ireland. I've been there. That's tough after being to them heights. Uh, but then they got it going. But if you think about playing Limerick and they have four games uh, in four weeks, like that's really really tough, especially against a physical team like Limerick who can also move. Like they can move with Waterford. But I think they have their game plan down. They know exactly what they're doing. Desi Hutchinson now has two or three inter-county years played, whereas, you know, the first year or two, he's finding his feet, still playing well. But now he's probably, you're talking about him as being one of the best corner forwards in Ireland at the minute, no doubt. Um, and then you've tied the Burka back, and, like, he looked very comfortable there today, tied the Burka. They're getting minutes into his legs. He's going to be massive, and a huge loss. He was a massive loss last year. If you even think that Watford were playing, Shane Bennett, great player, but probably not noted as a centre-back, and probably won't be a back this year, but they were missing Neil Daly and missing Tyke de Burke out of their half-back line. Today, two of them boys... One scored a point, Tiger Burke had played well. Irla Daly, very, very strong coming forward and scored two points. So even on top of that, you know, they have they have strength and depth. They have strength in every line of the field. And look, they should, like they really should be looking at an all Ireland this year or reaching one. And one man we haven't even mentioned, Whit Waterford. And I think that this probably shows you exactly where Waterford are. We haven't mentioned Austin, Gle- Austin Gleeson, you know, missing there today. But I think that shows you exactly where Waterford are now at this stage. But... um. One other thing I want to talk with you, Paddy, like it's been talked about throughout the league, maybe the officiating of the hand pass. Now, we we saw maybe one or two calls there today, but for you, how do you think we can sort that problem out? Because from what I've seen there, maybe one of them was a correct call, but the other one, you know, maybe incorrect. But again, it's so hard for referees to see, like, how are we going to solve this problem? I, uh, it's not very simple, but I think it can be made more simple. I think there's two things. Number one, uh, the rule is a clear strike in action. So I have to show him. Now, it's not always possible, but if it's not, then you have to try and make it that effort. But number two, there's an awful lot of pulling of the spare arm or the the, 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 the hand that holds the, the ball. There's an awful lot of pulling that arm in a tackle. And I think maybe even just to pull back on that a small bit, maybe just to penalise that a little bit more and it leaves you time to actually complete a proper hand pass. But if you've gone into a tackle or the other team have worked hard enough and they've surrounded you and then you just throw the ball away and stop pulled, it's very, very frustrating. So uh, it's a clear strike in action. And, you know, I was, you know, I probably put up a tweet there last night and I was talking about, you know, Anthony Daly couldn't even see on the television from a slow motion replay. He was saying, well, I think it might have been a, a hand pass. Well, from a slow motion replay and you think it might have been, then it's not a clear strike in action. So... I think the onus has to go back in the players, back in the coaches, and just at least try to make it as obvious as possible, especially uh, when you have the time to pass it properly. And finally here, Paddy, from what we've seen throughout the league so far, any any team in particular that is impressing, impressing you outside maybe Waterford? Yeah, I t- Cork. Cork are really impressing me. Um, I think they look very comfortable with how they're playing. I think some of their smaller guys, um, Shane Barrett, Jack O'Connor, uh, Cahillan looked to have bulked up a little bit not, not a huge amount but a little bit over the winter I think Coleman is playing on another level um, and Fitzgibbon is playing quite well around the middle of the field and I just think they're after coming on a little bit since the All-Ireland final like the All-Ireland final um, that will have showed them the level like they really must be sore after that one but they're a young young team and that will have showed them the savagery the level of physicality the concentration the fitness levels you need to compete with the top team in the country and I, I, look, we don't know what Limerick are going to be this year. We, we think they'll still be, you know, obviously the top team. But I think Cork and Waterford are the teams that are best placed to challenge them if a challenge is to come.